the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, the epistles taken from St. Paul's letter to the Catholics in Corinth, chapter 15. Corinth is a city in Greece. Brethren, I make known unto you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast after what manner I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Kephas, that's St. Peter, and after that by the eleven. Then he was seen by more than five hundred brethren at once, of whom many remain until this present day, and some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James, then by all the apostles, and last of all he was seen also by me, as by one born out of due time. For I, I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace in me has not been void. The Holy Gospel. Taken from St. Mark, chapter 7. At that time, Jesus, going out of the coast of Tyre, came by Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, 
to the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they brought to him one man who was deaf and mute. And they besought him that he would lay his hand upon him. And taking him from the multitude apart, he put his fingers into his ears, and spitting, he touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he groaned, and said to him, Epheta, which means, Be thou opened. And immediately his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loose, and he spoke correctly. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal did they publish it. And so much the more did they wonder, saying, Who has done all, He has done all things well. He has made both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Thus are the words of the sacred scripture. Tomorrow morning there will be Mass at 8 o'clock in the morning. Tomorrow will be 8 o'clock Mass. Tuesday there will be Mass at 5.30 in the morning. If you wish to come, uh, that, will, that will initiate officially the pilgrimage of the Catholic Martyrs. We will have uh, 13 boys from all over the country coming here. And after the 5.30 Mass and a quick breakfast, they will be on the road for a three-week adventure. Among the many adventures will be seeing the site in St. Simon's Island in Georgia, where there were a handful of monks and priests martyred by the Protestants, and some by the Indians. And also they will, we will have Mass, where well, the first Mass was in 1565, on September 8th, the birthday of the Virgin Mary in St. Augustine, Florida. And there's an altar there facing the ocean, facing the east, uh, around the spot where the, the, the priest who came, uh, I forgot his name, who came from Spain and offered the Mass to thank God. So we will have Mass there. And uh, so pray for all these young men who are going. Pray that uh, it be spiritually fruitful above all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. St. Catherine of Siena, she said, The whole world is going to hell because of silence. The whole world is going to hell because of silence. Imagine a fire department in your local district who doesn't sound any alarms, doesn't make any calls when a house is burning. How far is that going to go saving people? And our Lord ordered the apostles, go preach to all nations. He didn't say dialogue. He didn't say make discussions. He said preach the truth. And the apostles got a clear picture they were not going to be received with red carpets. They were not going to be received well. They were going to be driven out of towns. And our Lord said, if that happens, then wipe the dust off your feet and move on. He told them, uh, he didn't tell them they're going to have ticket parades. In fact, he said, be ready because they're going to drive you out of the synagogues. They're going to put you to death. And that is the true religion that has been passed down from the apostles, from the popes of tradition, from the councils of the church, and that Catholic faith which is handed down cannot be changed. It cannot be compromised. It cannot be adapted to modern times to fit the perverse modern science, for example, evolution, evolution which is at the root of modernism, which denies that God is the first cause, which denies substantial forms that God infuses into the matter. That's a philosophical thing, but it's, these are unchangeable realities. And it also uh, puts as a, as a main principle that things are always changing. So that they apply 
of course, to the ridiculous history of the human race, saying it's billions and billions of years, years old, saying that your great great ancestor was an ape hanging from a tree, that uh, the world came from a huge explosion. It's all the denial of God, and it's all this worship of the principle of change. And that's at the root of modernism, because doctrine, they really believe, can change. And that's at the root of the modern popes, of their, the poison in their heads. That modernism, they really believe truth can change. So what was good for Pope Pius IX, condemning separation of church and state, for example, and Christ the King, proclaiming the kingship of Christ in 1925 by Pius XI, in the time of the Cristeros and the persecutions in Spain. Well, that was good for those days, but for now we have to have democracy, we have to have the human dignity, and we have to have religious liberty. And this, this poison in the minds is it, 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 it's exactly what the enemies of Christ have, have wanted. And if you don't believe me, <clears throat> listen to their own words. This is taken from the secret letters of the Alta Vendita of the Freemasonic Lodge in Italy. And this was way back in the 1820s. And these letters were uh, <coughs> discovered, they were given to Pope Gregory XVI and Pope Pius IX. And were they all hung up about, oh, you can't reveal secret letters? No, because these secret letters they saw were a danger to the faith, a danger to souls. And what did those popes? What did those popes do? They put it on the internet. They put it out there. They publicized it and told the bishops, "Tear the mask off, these Freemasons. Show the world what they're really up to." And here's their letters. It's very interesting, and it's good for us to be reminded. Because you know what? How many Catholics come before the tabernacle and their mind is out somewhere else? During Mass, their mind is out football game tonight or TV show or who knows what. And here we're here before the living God, the tremendous sacrifice before whom the angels tremble, the devils scream and howl during the Mass. And the <laughs> Satanists and the Freemasons and the enemies of God, they don't doubt God is here. How many Catholics are priests today? If you took a poll in the United States, most priests, and I speak conciliar church, they don't even believe in the Holy Spirit. So, the enemies of Christ, they don't doubt. They know he's there. And that's why the Freemasons, it's, 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 it's a ritual, they do get consecrated hosts, they pay high money for them, and they desecrate those hosts. And they often build their monuments, Masonic monuments, including the White House, on top of consecrated hosts. The Eiffel Tower in Paris is built, it is said, on 13 consecrated hosts to show man over God, to show the dominion of man over God. So this is not boogeyman stuff. This is not conspiracy theories. This is revealed openly by the popes who saw the danger to the Catholic Church, who saw the danger to millions and millions of souls. And it's precisely this poison that we are watching now destroying the Church right down to her foundations. And that is why the Virgin Mary, she forewarned us, and that's why we cannot live in illusion and pretend that, well, you know, this is just, you know, we got to go along and obey and be quiet. No, we have to fight for the faith and we have to persevere. And even if the Catholics faithful to tradition are reduced to a handful, said St. Athanasius, they still remain the true Church of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we believe what all the Catholics always believe. We do the sacraments the way they've always been done for, for centuries and centuries, established by Christ himself. So listen to his, the words of these um, Freemasons. The Pope, whoever he is, will never come to the secret societies. It is up to the secret societies to take the first step towards the church. 
with the aim of conquering both of them, society and the church. What we ask for, what we should look for and wait for as the Jews wait for the Messiah, the Antichrist, is a Pope according to our needs. With that, we shall march more securely towards the assault on the church than with all the pamphlets of our brothers in France and even the gold of England. Do you want to know the reason for this? It is that with this, in order to shatter the high rock on which God has built his church, we no longer need Hannibal's vinegar, nor do we need gunpowder, and even need our arms. The devil is very slick. He, he knows he doesn't need concentration camps and tanks anymore because there were too many martyrs, too many went to heaven. We have the little finger of the successor of Peter engaged in the plot. And this little finger is as good for this crusade as all the Pope Urban II and all the St. Bernards in Christendom. I read on. Now then, to assure ourselves a pope of the required dimensions, it, it is a question first of shaping for him, for this pope, a generation worthy of the reign we are dreaming of. You've got to prepare the people with the new catechisms, the new mass, the media in the hands of the enemies of Christ, the schools, the secular schools, and the incredible means of communication which today reaches every home, every person. Leave the old people and those of mature age aside. Give them the oldies music. We're going to focus on the young with their music. Very important gesture on the cultural level to separate the older people from the younger people by means of music. And that's part of it as well. Go to the youth, and if it is possible, even to the children, you will contrive for yourselves at little cost a reputation as good Catholics and as pure patriots. And these are also, they're talking also to the infiltrators within the seminaries as well. Go to the youth, World Youth Day. What happens at World Youth Day? Just look at some of the pictures, the scandals. The, if the Blessed Sacrament is truly valid, the Blessed Sacrament, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Eucharist is treated like bubblegum. And this, your World Youth Day, just a couple weeks ago, uh, was right on the beach. So you had bikinis coming up for Holy Communion. Did the Pope say anything? No. Did bishops do anything? Absolutely not. And that's not even the worst of it. The worst of it is embracing the Jews, embracing the Muslims, given the appearance to the world that all the religions are basically the same as long as everyone is nice and sweet and means well. And that is a lie. And that is the worst cruelty a pope could do, any bishop could do, and any priest could do is be silent on the matter of where the true faith really lies. And all this whole world drowning in confusion and liberalism, it's, it is, this is the time of any for the pope to speak the Catholic truth. And notice, they're not, these people are not arguing about sin of incontinence. They know he's the Pope. We're not sin of incontinence. We know he's Pope. We have a president who's, you know, so-and-so. We all know that. He's destroying our country. We all know that. Is he not the president? He is. He holds the authority, and he will answer to Jesus Christ, and he will be on his knees before Christ the King on the Day of Judgment, and on his own particular judgment. So... The World Youth Day, go to the youth. The enemies know, and that's why they rot the schools. Now, uh, someone told me recently in Germany, they're, they're uh, teaching the children adult matters at kindergarten, first grade, second grade, perverting these poor kids. And the media and the shows and the TV is riddled with as you know what, the Sodom and Gomorrah sins which cry to heaven for vengeance. And I read on. This is the Freemasons. And this pontiff, like most of his contemporaries, will be necessarily more or less imbued 
with the Italian and humanitarian principles. That's equality, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, liberty of separation of church and state, liberty of conscience, all those liberties which are all been condemned by the church <coughs> because if you allow idiots to publish what they want and people read and see their pictures, it's going to ruin them. And you parents, you practice censorship every day at your table. <coughs> you put on your table, here's some sweet sweet tasting rat poison kids. It tastes real sweet. Enjoy it. You have your liberty now to choose. I'm not going to censor anymore what you eat. And of course, little kids, especially two-year-old and younger, they're going to go for what's sweet. And that rat poison or ant poison is going to taste real sweet. And you're going to find them all dead. So censorship is, is, is perfectly in line with the natural law, <clears throat> not just because the church condemned these things. And I finally uh, close with this last paragraph. You want to establish the reign of the chosen ones in the throne of the prostitute of Babylon. Let the clergy march under your standard of a liberal pope, always believing that they are marching under the banner of the apostolic keys. That's exactly what is happening <coughs> right now. All these bishops doing disco dances in their cassocks. What a shame. You talk about the salt losing their flavor and worthy to be stepped on and crushed. That's the bishops of the modern church. What a shame. What a betrayal to our Lord Jesus Christ and to the Catholic faith. And the priests are silent. And now even the Society of Pius X, which should be leading the charge against this attack against the faith, and this, these indignities to what is, belongs to the papacy are silent now. Even the SSPX now are silent. You're not going to hear this anymore from the pulpits. And if any priest does, he's going to get a message from Menzingen, shut up, and he'll be transferred before too long. That is what's happening. Because there's already been a compromise on doctrine at the highest levels of the Society of Pius X. And this is not false accusation. This is not internet rumor. Just look at the documents themselves. Read it for yourself. How the new Mass has been officially accepted as legitimately promulgated. When Archbishop Lefebvre said, no way, it is not legitimately promulgated. It's a bastard Mass. Illegitimate. Not acceptable. And the acceptance of Vatican II in the light of tradition, acceptance of open to dialogue on questions of religious liberty, ecumenism, and, and uh, collegiality, unacceptable. The Archbishop never, ever, ever compromised on these questions. And in fact, the Catholic Church has always condemned them. So why is Bishop Follet, who has never corrected his statements, saying that the errors of the Council, which we thought were from the Council, are not really from the Council? And this confusion, it's the enemies of the church have, have certainly infiltrated the society, and it was bound to happen. You intend to make the last vestige of the tyrants and the oppressors disappear. This is what the Freemasons say. Lay your snares like Simon Barjona. Lay them in the sacristies, in the seminaries, in the monasteries, rather than at the bottom of the sea. And if you do not hurry... Cardinal Mueller, will be patient with these traditionalists, Benedict, Pope Benedict XVI, little by little we'll bring them back to the conciliar church. Just one step at a time. Very slick. Here's the enemy speaking. And if you do not hurry, we promise you a catch more miraculous than St. Peter's. The fisher of fish became the fisher of men. You will bring friends around the apostolic chair. You will, have a, you will have preached a revolution in Tiara and in the Cope. Marching with the cross and the banner, a revolution that will need to be only a little bit urged on to set fire to the four corners of the whole world. And Archbishop Lefebvre says, this plan is diabolical, straight from hell. It is not only the enemies of the church who have revealed it, it is also the popes who have explicitly unmasked it and foretold it. Again, this is not boogeyman stuff. 
This is the reality, this is the real picture of what's going on. And that's why, again, we, we need to form our armies, our core, around the Blessed Virgin Mary, under her mantle, and we're, otherwise we're not going to make it. So what happened at World Youth Day? Well, Pope Francis I was interviewed, and something that should make every priest and bishop stand up and say, enough, and demand this pope to get on a cart, get on his pope mobile in Rome, like happened before, take his shirt off, and whip his back through the streets of Rome for public penance. That happened before. And that's what needs to be done again. <clears throat> Why? Listen to this. When he was questioned about Sodom and Gomorrah's sins, <clears throat> what was his answer? <clears throat> Who am I to judge, he said. Who am I to judge a G-A-Y person of goodwill who seeks the Lord? You can't marginalize these people, he said. Priests? He was asked about priests coming into the seminaries and all that. And this atrocity is, is, was his response. If someone is G-A-Y, I only want to say it because St. Paul says don't even let it be named among you, <clears throat> but it needs to be today. If someone is G-A-Y and he searches for the Lord and has goodwill, who am I to judge? And this is the Pope speaking. It's unbelievable. And he, as a pope, he has a duty, and every bishop and priest has a duty to repeat the Catholic faith. What does God say about this sin? You want to know what the Lord God says about this sin? I'll just take a few quotes. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind, because it is an abomination. Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 29. Every soul that shall commit any of these abominations shall perish from the midst of its people. Leviticus, chapter 20. Sanctify yourselves and be holy because I am the Lord your God. And then later he says, If anyone lie with a man as with a woman, both have committed an abomination. Let them be put to death, their blood be upon them. And Moses put them to death. And every state, every uh, government in the history of the world would put these people to death if they publicly flaunted it and publicly scandalized others. And if they did not repent, and if they did enough public crime, more serious than murder, they were put to death. It was a capital punishment. And this sin used to always be labeled a psychiatric a mental disease until the 70s when they removed it from the psychiatric journals and called it a normal thing. And we know what God thinks of this. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham had to beg our Lord, Lord, if there's 50 just people, will you save the city? Uh, God in his mercy, of course, okay, Abraham. Find 50 just people, I'll, save, I'll spare the city. <coughs> so Abraham prays like we should pray, with confidence and humility. Lord, what if there's 40 people? <laughs> All right, I'll spare the city. Lord, 30? Okay, I will. Lord, 20 people, will you spare the city? Yes, Abraham. 10, Lord. And God says, if you can find 10, I will spare the city. God bless you. And Abraham, he couldn't find ten. Couldn't find them. Because these sins spread like disease. And God sent the two angels who appeared as young men come into the city. And these young men were attacked by all these inhabitants. They were pounding on the doors. Give us these men. Just foul. Foul. And the angels said, we're here to escort you out of the city because God's going to destroy it. And uh, you can read those chapters in Genesis. 
And of course, uh, Lot fled with his family. Lot's wife got curious. God told him, don't look at my wrath. And Lot's, Lot's wife got curious. She turned to stone. That stone is still standing around the, the Sodom and Gomorrah area. And Sodom and Gomorrah was literally destroyed by fire and brimstone. Nothing grows on it today, not even weeds, except the southern part of the Dead Sea. And uh, we have also in recent history, I mean recent as, as around Jesus Christ's time, is uh, Pompeii. Pompeii. The scientists all say, well, it was an accident, and, you know, the explosion of this volcano was an accident. They dug up all the, you can look up the history of the city of Pompeii. They had over 25 houses, brothels. And these sins of Sodom and Gomorrah were rampant in those cities. And those cities now, are, they were caught sudden destruction upon them. And that's why when the Virgin Mary of Akita says fire will descend from heaven, now we can see why. Because Sodom and Gomorrah's sins cried to heaven for vengeance. And priests who have preached these things from pulpits, and even Protestant preachers, are being arrested and put in prison for hate crimes. And that's very possible for us too. But we cannot shut the truth. The truth must be told. And then St. Paul, in Romans 1, chapter 22, he says, God gave them up to the desires of their heart unto uncleanness, impurities, and dishonored their own bodies among themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie. This is the modern world. They changed the Catholic truth for a, a, a conciliar Vatican to lie. Everybody's believing this lie, and now even the Bishop Follet and the leaders are believing this lie and trying to justify this lie that religious liberty is limited. Vatican II is not so bad. The new Mass is legitimate. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God delivered them up to shameful affections. A normal affection between a, a man and a woman, between husband and wife, that God blesses and wants to increase and multiply with many children, that is a normal thing. But shameful affections goes against the nature. For their women have changed the natural use into that use which is against nature. And in like manner, the men also, leaving the natural use of the women, have burned in their lusts one towards another, men with men working with that which is filthy, and receiving in themselves the recompense which was due to their error. They got what they deserved, the fire and brimstone. And as they liked not to have God in their knowledge, they got tired of hearing about God, their catechism, sermons. They got tired of reading spiritual books that lead them to God and writings of the saints and the teachings of tradition. They wanted to fill their heads with video games, and nonsense, and worldly shows, and soap operas, and stupid movies. This is the modern world. God delivered them up to a reprobate sense, to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all iniquity, malice, fornication. Fornication, rock and roll, the very name rock and roll, and rock and roll music is built on fornication. And even the rock musicians themselves say, rock and roll is everything from the neck down. It's all about the flesh. Avarice, wickedness, full of envy, murder, abortion, contention, fighting, deceit, malignity, whisperers, detractors, hateful to God, contumelious, proud, haughty, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, this is our modern, this is the modern world right here. Just read the newspapers. You're, this is the front lines. <coughs> Foolish, dissolute, without affection. Children killing their parents. Without fidelity, without mercy. Without mercy, euthanasia, genetics testing. Who having known the justice of God did not understand that they who do such things are worthy of death. And not only they that do them, 
but they also that consent to them that do them. And what's one of the conditions of consent? It's silence. And all the bishops of the world and all the priests, including the priests of the society, they have to speak out against what's going on, otherwise they consent. And that will also bring a punishment on this world, is the silence of those who should speak out, as the Virgin Mary said in Quito. Her, her statue is in the corner here, the Virgin Mary of Quito, in Ecuador, Our Lady of Good Success. And then, and then you have all the popes. The popes have warned us about all this. And the list goes on. And I will go through the whole list for your sake. You can study these, and you need to study these, especially you men. For Pius VI, Pius VII, Pius IX, Pius X, condemn religious liberty and all these false freedoms. Leo XIII wrote magnificent encyclicals condemning the false liberties. And, let's say, and religious liberty, the false religious liberty. <coughs> and Archbishop Lefebvre, he speaks about the triple pact of the, the triple agreement of the Vatican with three enemies. And this is what's happening now also within our dear society in Pius X. And that's why it's so serious. It's very grave. First agreement was with the Freemasons. Cardinal Bea actually flew from Rome in 1962 to New York City. He met with the Jewish B'nai B'rith, which is the High Masonic Lodge, and he asked them, what do you want from the church? We're going to have this beautiful council, what do you want? They said, give us religious liberty. He flew back, Father John Courtney Murray, who wrote the treatise, <laughs> Dignitatis Humanae, the document on religious liberty, it was canonized at Vatican II. And what does that mean? Religious liberty means, it means, in reality, it means attacking Jesus Christ, that he's not God, that he's not king. We do not want him to reign over us. That's what it really means. And what does it mean concretely? That the state can, can be neutral on matters, matters of religion. The state should not be Catholic. But all of you were created by God, each one of you. Your families were created by God, and the state is a creation of God. And the state has a duty to protect the common good of the people. And that includes not only their bodies, but also indirectly for the state, their souls as well. That means the state, normally, its duty is to protect the people from heresy and false beliefs. That's why you need to censor the printing press. You need to censor the movies. You need to censor the internet. These things need to be censored, but according to the Catholic truth, and not according to the censorship of the enemies of Christ, who censor everything that's of the truth. So the Freemasons got what they want, religious liberty. And that meant divorce laws, uh, abortion laws, the uh, secular education laws, and uh, no prayer in the schools laws, and uh, now the uh, Sodom and Gomorrah sin laws, which are now just recently uh, proclaimed in the USA by the Supreme Court and in France. And these things are going to bring fire from heaven. And now everybody's saying freedom, 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 dignity, dignity, dignity. But what happens to the good people? They're oppressed. Babies killed in their mother's wombs. Good people who are being in prison for opposing these things. So that's the first agreement. Second agreement was with the Protestants. Protestants, what do you want? They said, give us a mass that we can join together and pray with. And they did. Cardinal Bayer wrote the Freemasonic New Mass of Pope Paul VI, which omits everything referring to the Catholic sacrifice, to Jesus crucified, to the propitiation uh, power of the Mass to release souls from purgatory. All that's gone in the New Mass. And you cannot go to the New Mass nor can you go to masses of priests who compromise with the new mass in Vatican II. Because by going to their masses, you support their errors. And that's why, for example, in Spain and in Mexico and in France, the people would not go to masses of priests 
who swore allegiance to the governments of Freemasonry or of the Communists. So they fit the Mass and the sacraments to please the Protestants. And it's true. Max Thurian was a big, a big uh, Protestant leader in, uh, in Europe, in Taizé, in France, a big ecumenical place. He said, yeah, we can say now the Mass upon the Six with no problem. It's all ecumenical. It's all togetherness. And then the third agreement was with the Communists. What do you want? The Communists said, don't condemn Communism. In Vatican II, did they condemn Communism? Archbishop Lefebvre himself presented the 450 signatures of Cardinals and Bishops demanding the Pope, Paul VI, to, co to condemn Communism. And everybody knew in the world that the Catholics were being crucified, put in prison, being put to death, starved to death behind the, the, the uh, Communist countries. Silence, silence, silence. And this pact with the Freemasons, the Protestants, and the Communists, the Archbishop says this, it is clear that there was at the Second Vatican Council an agreement with the enemies of the Church, so as to finish off with the existing enmity towards them. But this is an agreement with the devil. And that's why you don't hear from the Catholic Church condemnations anymore. And that's what Pope Paul VI told Archbishop Lefebvre. Oh, we mustn't condemn, we mustn't condemn, because people would think the Church is, is a cruel mother. But what more cruelty can there be than to allow the damnation of souls by being silent? And this applies again to all those who are silent against the modern errors and the errors within the Church and now within our dear society in Pius X. So, you, dear faithful, pray the Rosary. The Virgin Mary told Sister Lucia, there is no problem, whether it be family problems, individual problems, social problems, <coughs> national problems, international problems, there's no problems that cannot be solved by praying the Rosary. And let's not underestimate the power of the rosary. Make sure it's said every day in your homes. And when you pray it, pray it well. Because the rosary has a special power, a special grace in these times. It is our weapons. 59 bullet machine gun. Fight it. Use it against the devil. This is not just nice children talk to make them pray. We are all children of God, and we better fight, and we better do battle and get on our knees and pray because we're going to get blown over too. We must use her weapon, the rosary. And today is the feast of St. Dominic. And St. Dominic, there were two things going on at, when he was alive. One, the Albigensian heresy was spreading. And this Albigensian heresy was not just an error against the faith. That's the worst thing what attacked doctrine. That's worse. But the second thing was people were committing suicide all over the place, and they were fornicating all over the place, and marriage was considered evil. Because they taught, the Albigensians taught, there's a good God who's of the spirit, and a bad God of matter. The bad, the bad God made material things, so even your body is evil, marriage is evil, so you can do what you want. And, and to to uh, commit suicide was considered virtuous, because you'd be freed from your body and be pure spirit again. And so this was spreading rapidly. And so Simon de Montfort had to go to battle against the whole region of France. I mean, a real war. And the Virgin Mary appeared to St. Dominic and gave him the rosary, and told him, pray it, and he will defeat them. And St. Dominic gave it to the soldiers and Simon de Montfort, all the military guys were praying the rosary, and they won the battle. And by the rosary, St. Dominic defeated the heresy. So, the Virgin Mary wants to have another victory, and it's we who have to, she wants us to do our part to bring it about, which is to be devoted to her, pray her rosary well, and be strong in the faith. So, uh, the catechism. 
Oh, I got, I got 90s in catechism. Oh, I did well. I graduated many years ago. I know my catechism. No, you don't. You don't know it well enough. Even we priests who study our whole life, we're always discovering something new, even in the Baltimore Catechism. Go back and research and reread the catechism. Don't let a week go by without rereading something of the catechism or the Council of Trent. And you'll discover how little we actually know about our faith. So let us fight on and trust in the Virgin Mary under her banner, under her mantle. We will have victory. And let's ask the Mother of God to move this Pope, wake him up, shake him up, knock him over, and convert him to at least consecrate Russia. A Mary conceived without sin. A Mary conceived without sin. Mary conceived without sin. In the Father and in the Son and the Holy Ghost. Oh, no.